Let's get weird into it. Number 10. The Mission Abort. Imagine this. You're on your couch, deep in the seventh hour of a binge watch. A craving hits you. Not just any craving, but a very specific, almost holy need for a bag of stale tortilla chips. And that questionable salsa that's been in the back of your fridge for... A while. A mission is born. You heave yourself off the couch with the determination of a polar explorer. You have a purpose. You are a vessel for the will of the snack gods. You march from the living room, through the short hallway, and into the kitchen. You arrive. You stand there, bathed in the eerie, humming glow of the refrigerator light. And then, nothing. The idea, once so bright and clear, has evaporated. It's gone. Vanished. Your mind is a perfect, serene blank. The mission, the driving force that propelled you across ten feet of linoleum, has been wiped from your memory banks. You're left standing in a room, with no idea why you're there, feeling like a video game character whose player just put down the controller. All you can hear is the cosmic joke of the universe laughing at you as you vaguely pat your pockets, as if the reason you're there is written on a piece of paper you've lost. The ghost of a thought haunts you, but it has no shape. It was... something... about... chips? No, that can't be it. It was probably something important, like filing your taxes, or turning off the gas stove you definitely left on. You have no idea. You trudge back to the living room, defeated. And as you sit down, it hits you with the force of a lightning bolt. The chips. The salsa. And you realize, with dawning horror, you were holding the empty chip bag the entire time. Number 9. Naming the Demon. What you just experienced isn't a personal failure. It's not early onset dementia. It's not a sign that you're losing your mind. Well, it might be. But it's also a documented studied and surprisingly common psychological phenomenon. It has a name, and that name is the doorway effect. Or, if you want to sound fancy at your next awkward dinner party, the location updating effect. Your brain, for all its magnificent complexity, is also a bit of a drama queen. It loves context. It organizes your memories not like a neat, alphabetized library, but like a series of movie sets. Every room you're in is a different scene, with its own props, lighting, and script. The thought, I need chips, is part of the binge-watching on the couch scene. It's the hero's motivation. But when you walk through a doorway, you're not just changing your physical location. To your brain, you've just yelled cut and walked onto a brand new set. This new set is the standing in the kitchen scene. Your brain, like an overzealous stage manager, immediately goes, okay, new scene. What's the motivation here? What are the props? Refrigerator, sink, mysterious sticky spot on the floor, Great. Ditch the old script. We don't need it anymore. That's the doorway effect. The physical act of crossing a threshold triggers your brain to archive the previous event and start a new one. It essentially hits the refresh button on your short-term memory. The doorway is a mental divider, a chapter break in the story of your last five minutes. Your brain just wiped the slate clean, assuming that whatever was important in the last room is probably irrelevant in this new one. For your own good, of course. Number 8. Your brain's tiny apartment. Why would our brains be designed with such a ridiculously inconvenient flaw? It all comes down to working memory. Think of your working memory as the ridiculously small countertop in a tiny studio apartment. It's the space where you put everything you're actively using right now. The thought about the chips, the plot of the show you're watching, the nagging feeling you forgot to pay your electric bill, and the name of that actor who was in that thing. There's not a lot of space up there. It can only hold a few items at a time before things start to get cluttered and fall on the floor. To keep from going insane, your brain has to be a ruthless minimalist. It's constantly tidying up, throwing out anything that seems even remotely unnecessary. It's like a bouncer at an exclusive nightclub, and that bouncer's main job is to kick thoughts out to make room for new ones. A doorway is that bouncer's favorite excuse. The moment you cross that threshold, the bouncer taps the I need chips thought on the shoulder and says, All right, pal. You're in a new environment. Your services are no longer required here. Beat it. Your brain assumes that the new environment will have its own set of urgent priorities. Maybe there's a saber-toothed tiger in the kitchen. Maybe the salsa has finally achieved sentience. The old thought is deemed non-essential and gets booted to make room for new, potentially more critical information. The problem is, the bouncer is a little too good at its job. And sometimes it throws out the one thought you actually wanted to keep. Number 7 the digital dollhouse. You might be thinking, this is all just a funny feeling, a quirky brain fart. It's not a real, measurable thing. Oh, but it is. 
Psychologists at the University of Notre Dame, apparently tired of forgetting why they walked into their own labs, decided to test this scientifically. But you can't exactly follow people around their houses all day waiting for them to look confused. So they did the next best thing. They built a video game. They created a virtual reality environment, a digital dollhouse, and had test subjects wander around it on a computer screen. The subject's task was simple. They would pick up an object, a blue cross, a red circle, and carry it from one table to another. Sometimes, they had to carry the object across a single large room. Other times, they had to carry it through a doorway into a new room. The distance was exactly the same. The effort was identical. The only variable was that simple, pixelated doorway. The results were chilling. When participants simply walked across the large room, they remembered the object just fine. But when they walked the same distance through a doorway, their memory took a nosedive. They were slower to recall the object and more likely to forget it entirely. The simple act of passing through a digital archway on a screen was enough to trigger their brains to flush their short-term memory. It proved the effect wasn't about distance or time. It was about the boundary. Your brain is so committed to this new room, new me policy that it falls for it even when the room is made of nothing but light and code. Number six, the event boundary. Here's where it gets weirder. It's not just doorways. The doorway effect is a cute name, but the real culprit is something scientists call an event boundary. This is any moment in time your brain perceives as the end of one event and the beginning of another. It's a mental punctuation mark. A doorway is the most obvious kind, a literal physical transition. But you experience event boundaries all the time without realizing it. Ever finish a phone call and immediately forget what you just agreed to? That's an event boundary. Hanging up the phone signals, end of conversation event. Ever close your laptop after hours of work and instantly feel like your brain has been wiped clean? Event boundary. The closing of the lid is a trigger. Even something as simple as a commercial break in a TV show or a loading screen in a video game can act as a soft reset, making you momentarily forget what was just happening. Your life isn't a continuous stream of consciousness to your brain. It's a series of discrete, neatly packaged episodes. The episode of answering emails, the episode of talking to mom on the phone, the episode of walking to the kitchen, and at the end of each episode, your brain's stage crew comes in, clears the set, and prepares for the next one. The problem is, you're the main actor, and nobody ever gives you the script for the next scene. You're just left standing there waiting for your cue, with no idea what the last line was. Number five, the hippocampus heist. So where does the memory go? Is it deleted forever, sent into the cosmic void? Not exactly. To understand this, we have to talk about the seahorse-shaped part of your brain called the hippocampus. The hippocampus is your brain's overworked, underappreciated librarian. Its job is to take your experiences, your working memories, and file them away as long-term episodic memories. It doesn't just store facts, it stores stories. The memory of needing chips isn't just chips, it's a whole file. 7.34 p.m. on the couch watching that weird documentary feeling a bit peckish, decided chips were the answer. When you're in the living room, that file is open on the librarian's desk. It's active, accessible. But when you walk through the doorway, the event boundary, the hippocampus librarian goes, okay, that episode is over. It takes the file, stamps it with a location and time, and sends it down a chute to the archives in the basement. It's not a thief that destroys the memory. It's just a lazy bureaucrat. The memory is still down there, somewhere in the vast, dusty archives of your long-term memory. The problem is, recalling it means you have to consciously send a request down to the basement. Get the librarian to stop what they're doing and have them go search for that specific file from two minutes ago. That takes effort. It's way easier for your brain to just focus on what's right in front of it in the new room. The memory isn't gone. It's just been inconveniently filed away by a system that prioritizes tidiness over your immediate snacking needs. Number four. Survival of the forgetful. This entire system sounds like a massive design flaw, a bug in our mental software. But what if it's not a bug? What if it's a feature, an ancient evolutionary feature that's just not very useful in a world of refrigerators and Netflix? Let's rewind a few hundred thousand years. You're not in a cozy living room. You're in a cave. You're not craving chips. You're desperately trying to remember where you stored the dried meat before the saber-toothed hyenas find it. Inside the cave is one context. Safe, family, fire, food storage. The plan you make inside is get meat from the back of the cave. 
But the moment you step outside the cave, through the doorway, you are in a radically different context. The new context is danger, predators, open sky, rival tribes. In this new environment is the most important thought in your head, get meat from the back of the cave. Or is it, is that rustling in the bushes a tiger? Your brain, built for survival, makes a choice. It purges the immediate, less critical goal from your working memory to free up every possible cognitive resource for scanning the new, potentially lethal environment. The doorway effect is an ancient survival mechanism. It's a way of ensuring that when you enter a new space, you're not still mentally occupied with the concerns of the last one. It forces you to be present. It's your brain's way of saying, pay attention, you're in a new place, you idiot. The old plan can wait. Staying alive can't. The tragedy is that this life-saving software is now being used to manage tasks, like remembering to bring a towel into the bathroom. Number three, hacking your own brain. So we're stuck with this ancient tiger avoidance software that makes us forget our grocery lists. We can't get rid of it, but we can use it. You can weaponize the doorway effect for your own good. Think about it. If walking into a new room can make you forget what you're stressed about, then walk into a new room. Psychologists call it context-dependent memory. It's why people tell you that you shouldn't work in your bedroom. You're teaching your brain that your bedroom is a place for work-related stress, which makes it harder to sleep. You can use this principle as a Jedi mind trick on yourself. Are you stuck in a loop of angry or anxious thoughts, replaying a conversation over and over in your head? Get up. Physically leave the room you're in. Go for a walk outside. Cross a threshold. Force an event boundary. It won't solve your problems, but it can provide a momentary circuit breaker. It gives your brain the cue it needs to file away the anxious ruminating episode and start the looking at a tree episode. You can't outrun your problems, but you can, for a few precious seconds, walk into another room and forget what they were. Number two, the doorway in your mind. This is the final, most unsettling piece of the puzzle. It's not just physical doorways. It's not just event boundaries like phone calls or closing laptops. The most powerful doorways are in your own mind. Have you ever been in the middle of a sentence, a really important, well-crafted sentence, and suddenly, a completely unrelated thought barges in, some random memory from third grade, or a sudden panic about whether you locked your car, and just like that, the sentence you were crafting is gone, utterly, irretrievably gone. That new thought just created a mental doorway. It served as an internal event boundary. Your brain, in its relentless pursuit of efficiency, treated your original train of thought as the old room and the new intrusive thought as the new room. It archived the first thought to make cognitive space for the second. It's the doorway effect, but the journey is entirely internal. There's no physical movement required. It's happening constantly, a nonstop war for the tiny countertop of your working memory. Every new idea, every distraction, every notification on your phone is a new person trying to shove their way into the club and the bouncer is just letting them in, kicking out whatever was there a second before. It's a miracle we can form complete sentences at all. You're not just forgetting why you walked into the kitchen. You're constantly forgetting why you even opened your mouth to speak. Number one, the curse of awareness. So here we are. We know the culprit is the doorway effect or the location updating effect. We know it's triggered by event boundaries that tell our brain to archive old information to make way for new. We know it's a byproduct of an ancient survival mechanism designed to keep us alert in new environments, a mechanism so powerful it can be triggered by a doorway in a video game or even a stray thought in our own heads. And now you know all of this. You are armed with the knowledge. You are cursed. Because the next time it happens, and it will happen, probably in the next 10 minutes, you won't just be confused. You'll be aware. You will walk purposefully into your bedroom, stop dead in your tracks, and a new thought will pop into your head. Ah, the location updating effect. My hippocampus has just archived my previous intention due to the event boundary created by the doorway. How fascinating. And you will stand there, a genius of your own neurological failings, appreciating the intricate cognitive science behind your own stupidity. You'll understand the process perfectly. You will have all the knowledge, and you will still have absolutely no idea why you went in there. Okay, my brain's tired. I'm going to go find more weird stuff. You know what to do if you want to see it.